so uh, let us get started with legal talks talk to of family law so in today's session let us discuss uh, schools of hindu law doctrine of factum valid customs under hindu law and uh, right and effect of conversion so without taking much time let us get started with schools of hindu law now when we talk about hindu law schools of hindu law basically there are two schools one is miktashara and other one is dayabhaga the miktashara school was prevalent or was seen widely in all parts of india except bengal it was written by vigneshwara based on ajnavalka smriti it was orthodox in nature and mostly in miktashara schools the son enjoys more rights after the father and he had the power to raise his voice uh, wherever the situation was demanded the property cannot be disposed in joint of family or undivided family okay so that was a major uh, issue in uh, miktashara moving on to dayabhaga school it was seen only in bengal region written by uh, jamutawahana and it was uh, a type of a digest and it was more reformed in nature like when miktashara was orthodox dayabhaga school was <coughs> reformed in nature and under this dayabhaga school only father has rights so like unlike in miktashara the son was equally powered empowered as father to take up decisions but in dayabhaga only father had all the rights or father enjoyed all the rights so property can be disposed like if it was a joint a joint family and one family member wanted his share so that selling of the share was possible under dayabhaga school but was not allowed under miktashara school let's move on further uh, looking at the subdivisions of miktashara school so as we have discussed earlier this school flourished in all parts of india except west bengal and assam where dayabhaga school was prominent so miktashara school included sub divisions of schools which uh, which included banaras school maharashtra school mithila school and dravida school and dravida schools were further divided as uh, tamil schools karnataka schools and andhra pradesh uh, school okay so these schools were widely subdivisions of miktashara miktashara school and they were seen almost all parts of india except the west bengal region except the west uh, west bengal or bengal region doctrine of factum valet so it, it's based on the maxim a latin maxim which means factum valet cured for a non debit means what should not be done it being done shall be valid now in the first case a thing should have not been done now by chance if it is done then it should be considered as valid okay so this again uh, was brought into existence by some eminent sources which state that this was uh, supported or widely brought into existence by the dayabhaga school the doctrine of factum valet states that once an act act is done or a fact is accomplished it cannot be altered by the written text of the laws like best examples in this case may be related to marriage or adoption okay now here an important aspect to keep in mind is uh, the directive principle should be followed 
wherever the directive principle was not followed then it may not be possible to invoke doctrine of fact and valid for instance if a marriage is solemnized and the marriage did not uh, follow all the essential customs or essential uh, entities of the marriage okay and in the later years if there is an issue then doctrine of factum valet related to marriage will not arise why because the directive principle was overlooked so what does the directive principle say the directive principle talks about fulfillment of essential conditions now since the essential conditions related to marriage were not fulfilled then it doesn't make it or it doesn't make it a part of doctrine of factum valet or in simple words doctrine of factum valet cannot be applied so here what is more important as directive rule should be taken into consideration based on directive rule or directive principle only the factor of fact factum doctrine of factum valet can be applied now let's move on to customs under hindu law now what is a custom so custom in simple words is a rule followed by community of people for a long time means if someone is into a practice of a doing practice of doing a thing for a prolonged period of time okay for a prolonged period of time then it becomes a custom and custom here we are talking about community means they should have been widely accepted by people or a group of people and the second condition is it should have been into existence for a longer period of time so in that case we refer to it as a custom now it is based on the mix maxim via trita via to the means the beaten path is the safe path now what is the beaten path here and what is the safe path means if people have been following a thing for a long time and they have been yielding a result from the thing that they have been followed that means it is yielding a result and at the same time it is not doing any harm so a custom is something which is being into practice for a period of prolonged period of time and which always uh, possibly possibly fetches or gets a best result okay or good result so then such a thing uh, is a good custom that has to be followed now in case of Palliapan Chitti versus Elgin Chitti, AIR 1922 PC 288. The Supreme Court, the Honorable Supreme Court of India held that. So customs were a source of Hindu law. Okay. And a valid custom has to satisfy all the re legal requirements. So here the cust uh, Supreme Honorable Supreme Court made it very clear that it it that a custom is a source of hindu law and it should also fall follow it should also uh, it becomes a valid custom when it satisfies all the legal requirements now when we talk about customs under hindu law section 3a of the hindu marriage act 1955 clearly defines custom as follow the expressions customs and usage signify any rule which having been continuously and uniformly observed for a long period or a long time has obtained the force of law among hindus in any local area tribe community group or family so section 3a of hindu marriage act 1955 is making the definition of custom very clear 
that it should have been in usage continuously and uniformly means there should not be any pauses and the form of the content uh, custom should not changed okay it should remain uniform there should not be any changes in the custom and that should have been practiced for a long period of time then what happens it will grab the uh, or it will grab the attention of law okay and such custom can be related to any local area tribe community or group or family in india okay so so which section uh, this uh, which section defines customs of hindu law section 3a of hindu marriage act 1955 defines the custom so customs or observed should be good and approved by public now what are the customs that are followed they should be doing some good to the society and they should be approved by public okay so this are the two conditions for uh, the consideration of customs they should be good and they should be accepted or approved by the society by the public of the society now let us look at one of the case study uh, balaswami redier versus balakrishna redier air 1957 mad 97 now what happened in this case is the uh, the grandfather of the family married granddaughter okay and in the later years the granddaughter's the granddaughter's son claimed property now here the court held that it was immoral and opposed to public policy and cannot be treated as valid custom so here the court has made it a very clear uh, that marrying a granddaughter is not considered to be a good thing and a thing which cannot be accepted by public or which is not good to the society so hence they did not support Uh, or a verdict was held that it was immoral and opposed to public policy and cannot be treated as valid custom okay now there are many there were many customs which were against the public like for example dowry sati or not valid customs as they are opposed to public policy so all the customs may not be good to the society so if a custom is seen to do some harm to the society then it may be opposed or it may not be considered as a valid custom so examples are dowry and sati so customs under hindu law custom customs practice customs practices prohibited under various laws just now we have discussed there are few customs which are looked down by the society so obviously they will be prohibited so means they are not supposed to be performed anymore in the society so let us look at prohibited customs in india so one is polygamy polygamy is marrying more than of two or three people at the same time so this is a punishable crime under section 11 of hindu marriage act and it also <clears throat> punishable under section 494 494 and 495 of indian penal code or ipc section 494 and 495 can also attract punishment for polygamy for marrying more than two or three people at the same time then second one is concubinage concubinage is where uh, cohabitation happens without a proper established relationship so this is also treated as uh, prohibited in nature child marriage so child marriage say if a child is 
entered or forced to enter a marriage being a minor or below the age of 18 years then this is also a prohibited custom so dowry dowry has been remarked as a social uh, social evil okay the, the dowry prohibition act 28 of 1961 lays down a very clear punishment in case of dowry and it is also punishable under ipc section 498a and 304b so obviously sati is considered to be an illegal custom which is also not recognized as a valid custom under hindu marriage act 1955 now let's move on to right and effect of conversion so what happens if a person converts from hindu religion to another religion okay in india one can convert from one religion to another at their free will free will means uh, they have a free freedom they have a liberty to leave one religion and embrace another religion so indian constitution gives this freedom to all the indians to follow the religion which they like but whenever there is a conversion from one religion to the other religion there will be an impact on the conversion so effect always talks about rights so what may be the result on marital rights now if the husband renounces hinduism means if the husband leaves uh hinduism then the wife can seek a divorce and if the wife renounces hinduism then husband can uh, seek divorce okay now uh, this was seen in case of shrimati sarla mukdal versus union of india air 1955 sc 191531 uh, now what happened in this case is the husband uh, wished to convert it to islam for the second marriage means he was in an intention to enter into a marriage the second time so the supreme court held that it was considered to be a bigamy which is uh, punishable under section 17 of hma 1955 hindu marriage act 1955 and it was also a punishable crime under ipc section of 494 in this case the supreme court gave very clear indicate uh, clear verdict that the husband can convert to islam but he was not allowed to get into a second marriage okay so that's about effect okay effect of marriage right to maintenance okay so section 24 of hindu adoption and maintenance act provides provisions for a uh, right to maintenance means whenever some some unexpected conversion happens within the family then section 24 of hindu adoption and maintenance act okay lays down clear uh, instructions for maintenance so if the husband renounces hinduism then wife can come claim a right for separate resident residence separate house and maintenance under section 182f of hindu adoption and maintenance act okay so this brings us to the end of uh, today's session so hope you liked the session okay please do uh like and subscribe my channel have a good day